Well, welcome officially to our Christmas series. We're going to be cooking over the holidays. We have four exciting episodes coming at you and we really can't wait to get started. Yeah, so normally this time of year, or any time of year really, we would be traveling. We are the delightful travelers. Yes. Uh, we had full intentions of going to Christmas markets this year. We did last year. We really wanted to do it again, obviously, yeah. what, for what, obvious reasons what we happened? do it. What happened? COVID or something? But yeah, we decided <laughs> the plan was that we would stay here. We would cook some of our favorite foods from some of our favorite countries. So One we're second. starting off with... Poland. But what about our hats? What do you guys think? I was just going to say, is there something on my head? Yours makes a noise. It makes a little sure jingly noise. noise. So we're very excited to take you guys along. If you're new here and you're wondering who we are, I'm Trevor. This is Anna. We're the Delightful Travelers. Make sure to hit subscribe, click on the bell. You know the drill. But before we get started, I forgot one thing. Just hold on a second. What did we forget? It's an ugly Christmas sweater. Where did this come from? Where did yours come from? I have one too. This actually looks way better on you. Than now I me. feel ready to get going. But before we do, we're very curious mm -hmm. and we wanted to talk about uh, traditions. When you guys woke up on Christmas morning. As kids. As kids, what did you do? For us, I think we both talked about this earlier. I would always wake up really, really early, like sometimes 4.30 in the morning, try to sneak out, see if the gifts were there, see if Santa uh, came to visit. And then I would go in my parents' room and kind of ask if I can go out. And if it was too early, that was like a solid no. But I'd still be up and they knew it. And then eventually they let me up. <laughs> I, mine was not like that at all. Oh, what was yours like? I, to this day, I am a person that enjoys to sleep in, <laughs> sleeping in in the morning that has never gone away. Okay. It also applied when I was a child. Every single year, I would sleep in, mm -hmm. and my sister would have to wake me up. Like, All right. and she'd go into my parents' room and be like, can I get, wake her up now? Can I wake her up now? And they would always say no. And I think around 7.30 or 8, they finally let her come in to wake me up. Every year. Wow. I wonder if she's the only person ever that had that happen. Probably. <laughs> All right. Let's get started with some cooking. All right. Welcome to our delightful kitchen. Welcome to our home. We're very excited to get started today. We're going to talk about the dishes in just a second, but take a look at this. My hat does something pretty cool. What do you think? It didn't work. What? Hold on. Redo. <laughs> there you go. There we go. Take a look. That's right. The raddest Santa hat on the planet. We also have some Merry Christmas aprons, so we will our clothes, our great sweaters will stay clean. But what are we gonna cook today? It actually took us a while to figure out what we should make, what we think we're capable of making, <laughs> what we can get the ingredients for, that kind of thing. And we definitely decided we have to do pierogi. It's like yes. it's one of the most traditional things you can have in One Poland. of the best foods in all of Poland. And it's pierogi, not pierogies. We you might say that wrong. Yeah, the video. we just naturally say that here, but it's pierogi. Yeah. This is what it's called. Even if there's multiple, it's still pierogi. Yeah, it's already plural. <laughs> also, last year when we were there, we had something called kibasha. I believe that's the name. Kibasha. Ka yeah, <laughs> kibasha. Uh, so that is like a sausage, a Polish sausage. I think it's just the word for sausage. Yeah, it must yeah. be just the word. So we're going to be cooking one of those and then we got a really interesting soup right so when we were there we actually had some really good sour soups they were delicious mm -hmm. but when i looked up recipes for them they required um sourdough starter which is a lot of work so i then came across a dill pickle soup should be interesting could be weird could be terrible we have no idea but it'll be fun have you ever had a dill pickle soup not us all right so we figured it made the most sense to maybe start with the soup we actually prepped everything, we cut everything in advance. So start with the soup, because that's gonna take a little while to cook. Yeah. And then while that's cooking, we will start like rolling out the dough for the pierogi and putting the pierogi together. That's gonna be <laughs> super interesting. Hopefully I'm really we can worried, do it. But I'm nervous about it. But I'm gonna start reading out the recipe that I found online for the soup and get Trevor to start adding stuff to our big stock pot yeah. over there. As you guys can see, we have a big old pot here. By the way, if you're curious about the recipes today, we will link to them below. Maybe yeah. we'll put them in the description. Yeah. Or just message us if you ever want them. So. Yeah. So we just got some stock and some water. So we'll start with that. Trevor will be my little assistant over here. All right, she's so the director some... today. She's the main chef. So basically stock first. Yeah, so let's put in some chicken stock. I just bought that at a local store. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's a little oh, frozen. Oh. oh, it came up, that's okay. <laughs> frozen, all right. <laughs> off, off to a, to a great start. start. <laughs> the water, so it's about eight cups of like stock water, whatever you want to do. 
And here is another weird thing about the recipe. It called for leeks and parsnips, and then in the ingredients list, it said to chop them, and then when you actually read the directions, it doesn't, it says don't chop them because you're gonna take them out later. So be weird, sure to huh? read both. Yeah. So we just kind of sort of cut them up so they're big enough to take out at the yep. end. So we got all our veggies ready. We have carrots, celery, sorry, I'm looking over the recipe, and potatoes. We also added, it didn't call for onions, and I just feel like that's really weird. I would, I always add onions to basically everything. Mm -hmm. So that's all in there. There's potatoes, yeah. carrots, celery and onion. All right, we got the vegetables in. Next up, we're gonna add a little bit of, I guess, the spices in or the, like the seasonings. Um, so it calls for parsley sprigs. It didn't say what type of parsley, so I just got Italian parsley and I chopped, I don't know how to do sprigs, so it's chopped up a little bit, whatever. It smells good. All right. That might be incorrect, but oh well. And we're gonna add bay leaves and allspice. So it's five allspice berries. So five of those little... If you guys are wondering what this is, I'll just kind of hold it here, but yeah. And two bay leaves. Two bay leaves. Yeah. Two. All right, so now it just says cover and cook until meat, we're not doing, uh, is cooked and veggies are soft. So we're just gonna bring that to a little bit of a boil and we'll uh, let it, let it uh, simmer for a cook. while. Yeah, simmer. <laughs> we're cooking. While. Yeah. <laughs> Cook. So we do want to talk about vodka, specifically <laughs> Polish vodka. So luckily we have like a boutique um, kind of liquor store here that has spirits and wines and things like that. And they had, I think this is considered, maybe some Polish folks can let us know. It's Belvedere vodka. I think it's the like cream, of, the cream premium, of the crop. Yeah, brand. premium brand. We don't know a whole lot about vodka. We certainly uh, drink some vodka drinks, but we're just gonna try this on its own. And I don't know if this is the traditional way to do it or not in right, Poland. We don't know if we should have it on the rocks, just do a shot, but you can do a shot. Well, let's see. I guess we'll just kind of go right for it here. Who got Now, I know last year, Vodka doesn't smell like anything, really. I know I don't think I should be uh, even smelling it. Last year in one of our videos, I kind of sipped on this because I'm not a person that could just take a full we shot. We did a, a bit of a tasting sort of yeah. in a bar last year when we did a food video, yeah. but it was like flavored vodka. It was, but I know a lot of comments, people were like, you don't sip it, you just kind of goes down the hatch. Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna try to go down the hatch right now and we'll see if she's gonna be up for it as well. <laughs> <laughs> Woo. Woo. Well, happy holidays, everyone. Wow. <laughs> I don't know if I've ever right. done a straight up, just plain old shot of vodka before. First time on camera. Oof. Oh, it smells strong. Down, down the hatch. Like I said, it smells like nothing. It smells like alcohol. <laughs> <laughs> it's good. It's refreshing. Okay, here we go. One, two. Woo. It burns, it burns. That wasn't too bad, actually. Mm, so. Now we're the drunk delightful travelers. Drunk delightful travelers <laughs> with a little bit of a Christmas buzz. Okay, the next part is what we anticipate to be the hardest because A, we've never done this before. So, we have our dough. We made this earlier. Right now it's in some plastic. Yes. Um, do you so, remember what, what went into this? Yeah, so I looked up a bunch of recipes. Um, a lot of them just call for like flour and water and that sort of thing, and an egg, I think. Mm -hmm. But I found a lot that also do, um, flour and sour cream. So we went with that because it just sounds kind of appropriate, I guess. Mm -hmm. So we just basically mixed, um, I think it was two cups of flour, one cup of sour cream, an egg, and a little bit of butter, and some salt. And that's basically it. And it sat for about an hour, something like that. It says uh, at least a half hour. Let it sit. Now we have to roll it out to mm -hmm. pretty thin, but not too thin. Yeah, and if you're wondering what this kind of um, like feels like, it, it's, to me, so far, it's kind of like a it feels and kind of looks like a pizza dough. Right. Um, yeah. It's really sticky though, so make sure, like even right now, I'm thinking like this is not gonna roll out the way I want, but I, I think it will. I just have to get it full of flour, so let's see what we can do. All right. Let's see what happens here, you guys. Ooh, this is boiling over here. Okay, so Anna said the soup is boiling back there. Uh, this is looking good already. It actually looks so much like pizza dough. Now, from the videos I watched, uh, I guess we're supposed to get this kind of as thin as, as possible. One of the recipes I read said get it to one eighth of an inch. <laughs> it's 
bring out the measuring tape, right? Yeah. So we're just going to kind of eyeball it. Um, we've had pierogi in the past, and I mean, we kind of know what it should look like. It's just the question is, can we do it or not? Now we have a glass. Um, we don't have like a cutter for this thing yeah. in Poland. There's, there's like kind of official cutters that like cookie cutters. This is a glass that has a, th I think it's like three inches across, which is what they recommend uh, to use. And it's kind of, it's not sharp, but I think it might do the trick. So basically I'm gonna- Yeah, so try to keep them as close together as possible to the, make as much, you know, make as many circles as possible like this. Right, so here we go. This makes me really nervous because this is like, I think the hardest part and by that I mean... I think the hardest part is going to be the next step where we put... Oh, right. Well... The fillings in, and then you have to like close them up and you can't have any holes or else apparently they'll fall out when you boil them, so... Alright, the moment of truth, the circles are cut. We have about a dozen uh, pierogi ready to go, so... I think we should just be able to... Uh-oh. Oh. <laughs> I mean, it's sort of working. We'll be able to save it, but... I think it's because we got so thin, so you just kind of remove this extra the extra portions around the circles and then... We could always make more circles out of those after. Yeah, I think we could actually, and we might do that because there's quite a bit of extra dough, but voila, we have our pierogies ready to go. We have our circles ready to go, right. not our pierogi. This is, yeah, we're not just gonna eat this. <laughs> All right, so our little circles are made. Um, I actually made the filling earlier. So these are kind of tradition, like the traditional Polish pierogi, they're called uh, pierogi ruszki, is that right? Rusz, ruszki, ruszki? ruszki? I think it's a ruszki. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, let's talk about what's so in the basically mixture. like potatoes and cheese. I found a bunch of different recipes, again, same thing like the dough, but in this we put um, potatoes, mm -hmm. and it called for farmer's cheese, which I don't even know what that is. I don't know what it so is. So we put ricotta cheese, we put um, some really nice uh, cheddar in there, mm -hmm. some salt and pepper, a little bit of butter, and uh, yeah. It smells really good, and it, you guys probably just seeing it visually, it kind of looks like potatoes. <laughs> yeah, it looks like mashed potatoes. So this is the part I'm maybe the most nervous for. Every video we watched, and I feel like all the vlogs I read, everybody had those fancy little like ice cream it's scoops. It's like a mini ice cream scoop. And it, so it measures it out for you. We don't have one of those, so we're sort of gonna have to eyeball it. Do we know it. how much we need? Just like a little ball, I don't know. We do have measuring, little measuring cups that are kind of like scoops. Mm -hmm. You wanna know try that? Let's try that, one second. Okay, got the tablespoon. As you can see, it's kind of like a small scoop. I don't even know if this is gonna work, but I think it's gonna be a little better than the, um, well, the, the big spoon, the big tablespoon. But let's see what happens. Let's try it. So you can see here, you have the dough. Now this one's a little thick. I know some people might say that. Some of the other ones are really thin, but the idea is kind of to put a ball in the middle and then you're kind of gonna fold it over. We'll see how that goes in just a minute. So we managed to do one already, kind of off camera, because we, we just didn't know what to do. And it's looking pretty good, I have to say. So we'll try to do it again here. What you want to do is stretch the dough, kind of make like a little pocket, like a half moon. And you want all the dough to stay, obviously, on the inside. Now and you want the dough on the outside, and the <laughs> filling on the inside. The filling on the inside, don't mind. No, I know, outside. but I'm gonna bring this up. This is obviously gonna be hard to do holding it, but I think you guys will see better. So now you can see it kind of have this half moon shape. So you don't want the dough, and right now I'm pushing that dough on Not the in- the dough. I'm pushing the filling. <laughs> I keep saying dough, because the dough is on the outside. Uh, the filling, you want that to stay on the inside. So when you start to pinch it off, you can stretch it. It's just like pizza dough. You can actually kind of stretch this out uh, quite nice. And the more you do that, yeah, it just ends up looking like a, a pierogi. So let's do a little bit of a soup check. It smells good, that's for sure. Whew, it smells Ooh. really nice. It's got a nice little simmer going on there. It's probably been about 15 minutes, so the veggies are getting a little bit soft. Um, so the interesting thing that we said about this recipe is that it calls for pickles. So what we have to do is shred the pickles and then if you read the uh, actual description of in the blog of like how to make this, they said the big mistake that everyone makes is you just add the pickles right into the soup. You don't not supposed to do that. You're supposed to cook them a little bit first in a frying pan, and then you add them at the very last minute. Okay, so for the pierogi, we have a few um, well toppings. We have some bacon. We're gonna kind of we'll cook this and then kind of cut it up into almost like bacon bits. Mm -hmm. And there's gonna be onions as well. Onions as well, yeah. So and then you mentioned um, early in the video, we have a sausage we're about to cook. It's uh, 
Kibasha? <laughs> sort of. We, we went to yeah. our local supermarket, I guess, mm -hmm. like a high end supermarket. Asked what they had that's closest to like a Polish they thought sausage, this... and they said that's the closest they have. It's yeah. Not white, right, but. It's gonna do the trick. Plus, we got some yummy mustard, and in Poland, they all like sausage and mustard as a combo. Okay, time for an update. Let's show you guys what's happening back here. The soup is looking exceptional. Not sure if you can see the uh, kibasha sausage that's back there. Bacon's pretty much done, and we got our water on uh, for the pierogi. I don't think that takes long, does it? No, so I think you drop them in the water, you try not to crowd them, is what I hear. So just a few at a time, and then when they float to the top, they are ready. Then we're gonna fry them, but uh, it should only take a few minutes, I think. Okay, back to the soup for a second. It's time for the sour cream, and is there dill too? There's dill to go in at the very last minute, but the sour cream needs to go in first. Seems a little bit, again, this soup just seems really bizarre to me, but <laughs> You don't put the sour cream directly into the soup because you don't want it to uh, congeal, what's the word, for uh, milk. Yeah, it, but the, uh, what we're gonna do is take some of the broth and put it into that and then kind of mix it up and then yeah. put it all into the pot. All right, this is looking pretty good. So I think you can see what the, the mixture kind of looks like. It looks kind of milky. Yeah. And we're just gonna, well, pour that right in. Okay, it's time for the main attraction, the main event. We have a pierogi, as you can see, and we're gonna drop these in the uh, boiling hot for about three to five minutes, is that right? Yeah, about three minutes until they float to the surface. Let's hope this works. First time, guys, so we'll see. Once it's done, we might fr kind of flash fry them a little bit, but yeah. we'll see how it goes. So I think we need to leave a little bit of space. You don't want to like overcrowd it. Mm -hmm. I think we're going to put about six in there. Yeah, that's okay. So they go right, they do actually go right to the bottom. Right, so hopefully they don't stick to the bottom. So check this out. These babies are floating. Let's take them out of the water. Oh, yeah. I'm gonna put them on a plate and then we'll throw them into the frying pan when that's ready. Looking good. We got some onions back there, a kind of caramelizing sausage. Yeah, that's looking quite good. And there's an update on our soup. So this. That's ready. That's ready to go. Look at that. You can see how it's like now it's a little more milky. Mmm. It's ready. It is ready. That took a long time. Yeah, like maybe three hours. But let's take a look at what's in front of us. I think we're gonna start with the soup. We're gonna jump right into this. Mm -hmm. So again, just to remind everyone, this is a dill pickle soup. Is that mm -hmm. just like, that's it in a nutshell? Dill pickle soup. Mm -hmm. Kind of looks like a, like a chicken vegetable or something, but it's mm -hmm. a bit more milky because of that sour cream we put in. Whoa. Mm. Whoa. That's really good. That's way better than I thought it was gonna be. Wow, so mm -hmm. honestly, when we thought of, or we heard of dill pickle soup, I was like, come on, how good is that gonna be? I thought it'd be too pickling, not at all. Mm. Mm. It has a nice little bit, little bit of a pickle flavor. Yeah, I think the sour cream though, mm -hmm. that helps cut it down. Yeah, and the dill, like this is the fresh dill that we added mm. at the very end. I love dill, I love mm. fresh dill. So. Mm. Mm. All the veggies are cooked perfectly. Mm -hmm. mm. One, say, one thing I will say that was weird about it, if you guys recall me saying that we were putting in leeks and parsnips and then you're yes. supposed to take them out at the end, the leeks kind of fell apart. So there's like kind of pieces of leeks. I feel like it would have just made more sense to cut up the leeks and have them as part of the soup. Absolutely. Okay, so we're gonna go in and try the, uh, the sausage here now. This is looking good. This smells incredible. And I might try it on its own before I try it in the mustard. What kind of mustard do we have? We have a Dijon. A Dijon mustard. Well. Oh. Mm. I'm gonna try it in the mustard. Oh, uh, I'm just gonna say first, ooh, the sausage. Mm. We fried it perfectly. Mm -hmm. On the outside, it's like golden, kind of crispy, kind of bursts, but mm. the inside, um, it's really soft. It's really mm. tender. It's really flavorful. Mm. Better it's, than I thought, and it's really good with the mustard. It's really good with the mustard, yeah. So maybe what I'll do is just try that mustard as well. Um, it's Dijon mustard, not a hot mustard. I thought yeah. we had a hot mustard. I wish we had a hot mustard, but we don't have one. Mm -hmm. Oh. Mm. Incredible. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's it right there. Honestly, mm -hmm. mustard, sausage. If you're in Poland, you have to get that. Yes. But I'm so excited for these pierogi. Yeah. Maybe not the prettiest that ever existed, but for our first try, they don't look terrible. You know what though? We, when we were in Poland, we were in a lot of places in Poland, mm -hmm. they kind of come out looking like this. So yeah. sometimes they're messy. Sometimes they're just on their own. It doesn't look like there's anything on top, but I kind of like when there's yeah. A little bit on top there. So we put some onions and some bacon and the sour cream on the side. Yeah, let's go for it at the same time. 
Well, the texture seems um, good. very good. I'm gonna try it without anything at first and just see, uh, see how it goes. Inside looks good. We actually did it. Wow. Mm. Mm -hmm. Well, that tastes just like some of the some of the pierogi we had in Poland. Dare I even say it and give us all that credit. Those are delicious. The inside is great. It's perfect. So mm. to try to describe these if you haven't had pierogi, because I don't think, for some people, I don't think you'd, they don't sound very exciting. Like they're kind of like a little dumpling. On the inside you have that cheese and the potato, which is very soft. Mm. When you put the bacon, we kind of overcooked the bacon intentionally to make it a bit mm. crispy, caramelize the onions. You get all these different textures going on. But I also think the inside, like the potato and cheese combo, was a good one. We did, like I said, ricotta mm -hmm. and uh, some sh like old sharp cheddar. Oh. And mm, it's really good together. Oh, and with that sour cream. Well, that's it. Mm-hmm. 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 Mm. Wow. I'm shocked, honestly, that we pulled all this off. <laughs> I'm really proud of us. Yeah, I'm proud of us too. Now I'm looking forward to cooking more different recipes from mm -hmm. around the world mm -hmm. as we go. But uh, yeah, this was exceptional. Again, we will leave the recipes um, below so you can try them over the holidays. We all got a little bit of extra time on our hands or most of us do with COVID happening. So mm -hmm. hopefully you guys can try mm -hmm. to make this because this is great. This is a, definitely a taste of Poland. It mm -hmm. kind of feels like we're traveling again. It does. It's a little bit of traveling at home. I like this. So last week, what were we doing? Oh man, last week we were so. Oh, we were at Peggy's Cove. It's the, one of the most right. iconic places, <clears throat> most photographed places in Canada. And then we had a nice little winter getaway. Yes. Yeah. Perfect. And then next week we're going to be making more food. Have we decided what country we're going to do? We don't know, but you guys will have to stay tuned and find out what we're going to cook next. So mm -hmm. we're going to be going through three more countries of some of our favorite meals. And we're going to attempt to, uh, to cook them. And hopefully they turn out like this, because this has been a lot of a lot of fun. And it if you got been. this far in the video, thank you, because we don't know how long it is. It's the first time we've ever done this. I think it's long. If you got this far, it probably means you like it. Make sure to uh, hit the like button and leave us a comment. Let us know about your Christmas traditions. Let us know what you think of our meal. And just thank you for watching. All right, guys, that's it. From Halifax, Nova Scotia, over the holidays, wishing you delightful travels. See you soon.